Raiden versus Grodd. Okay, so let's see what's next. Apparently it's just a bunch of missiles. And some sort of barricade robot. Odd, but definitely not the oddest thing I've seen all game. Okay, it's called a Grodd. Uh, how am I going to approach this thing? Okay, let's use some Defense cover walls. Blocking the way. Push that thing back. What? Just with my body? This thing looks like it weighs five tons. How the hell am I supposed to do that? Oh yeah, this is anime logic. I can do whatever the hell I want because I'm the main character. Okay, can retaliate. That's great. Ow! God damn this thing. It's got ridiculously powerful machinery on it, and I can barely get close to the damn thing. Oh, it got me. God, I hate these stupid stun-locking attacks, because it takes forever to get out of them. And I can't even hit him when he gets into his stance. It's ridiculous. Okay, I think I got the pattern. Thankfully, my ninja run essentially blocks literally every bullet ever thrown at me. Crap. Crap, I'm at 3%. Ugh, this thing's really holding its ground now. Must be because it's kind of outside the wall, it can get some resistance going. Oh, great, this is not going good, this isn't going good! Okay, smack. A couple more times and we'll be able to keep going. That'll be fun. I'll probably just, like, fling it into that back wall and it'll explode. It's gonna be great. See? Oh, wait, it stopped. Wait, what the hell is it doing? Sorry. Sloppy editing. Oh, crap, it stood up. And now it can attack. Great. Oh, this is good. Yep. The stun lock attacks. Yeah, but when it does that, it stands still, letting me kick it in the shins. But damn, this thing can run freaking fast. It's ridiculous. Almost because this thing's covered on all sides. Would this cover probably help? No, it can't. Grog can hit it aside like a ragdoll because screw physics. Ooh, good. Found a ration. Oh, there's another one up there. That's good. I'll make this a little easier. And it's still obliterating all my cover because who gives a shit? Okay, I think I'm starting to figure out how to dodge that attack. You can't just rush this thing. Since it's defended on all sides, it can attack me in two seconds before I can even do anything about it. A successful play mode leads to a stun locking attack, which means I can get some free hits in. And another stun lock allows me to get more hits in, because who gives a shit when Riot is the most overpowered thing in the room? Oh sh. Ah, oh, he can hit me in the face. That's nice. That's great. But I think I can still get this. I got two rations. It's at 50%. This is gonna be. Okay, let's get in a couple blade boats. It's actually going pretty good considering my other attempts. I am starting to enjoy this battle, actually. Why? Because it's a freaking fair challenge. The tank's notwithstanding behind me, and it keeps obliterating because fuck cover. This isn't a shooter, we don't need cover. Am I really at 1%? Oh, it should've hit me. For 1%. And then for 18%, because, uh, screw you. Stop hit me with the goddamn pile driver move! It's freaking unfair as shit! It's a stupid jumping puzzle. It doesn't work right. But who cares? We're almost done here. See, being aggressive is definitely the answer. And I don't really have much of a choice at this point because it's at 25%. I've only got one ration left. And let's get going! Oh, uh, you're just gonna let me wail on you? Oh, fine. Fine, fine, fine. Oh, crap, pile driver. Stop hitting me with the pile driver move. It's annoying. And hot. You've only got 8%. You're done. 
let's kick you in your face. All pretty realistic way and just don't even give a shit anymore. Missed the final blade mode and that's all for the fight. Of all the things to throw at me mid-mission, Battle Forklift was one I'd never see coming and now that the damn thing is albeit scrap metal, the scores are ready for delivery. Did I really just say that? Gameplay. Throughout this entire mission, we've basically been fighting Desperado War Machines either alone or in a small group. So really, this machine shouldn't have counted, but it had a boss health bar, so here we are. Other than that, this is a boss that does not disappoint in the way that you could insta-kill the gorilla robots from previous in the level, as it can actually hold itself together with a competent ability to combat the enemy with this thing being loaded up with a cannon, rockets, and its plow being used as attacking arms, which can combo together to make itself an aggressive threat, and from the footage you saw, it actually got worse because it added in the pile driver move, and it is not easy to avoid. If you want to avoid that attack, you have to jump at an incredibly specific moment in order to get over it, and I'd rather just take the penalty rather than try to attempt a timing puzzle with a margin of 0.5 seconds. Other than the actual fight itself, before this you actually have to get to the battle by doing the equivalent of smashing your shoulder into a metal door until you paradoxically break it down. Yep. See, the first stage of this fight is the grot in its wall mode, where its plow and guns are out making a barricade to the actual battlefield, and to beat it, you have to smash yourself into the plow multiple times even though the plow can pick itself up and retaliate. The timing's a bit dicky, but halfway through you'll probably figure out the pattern and it just turns into a snore fest. Which is what I thought this thing was until it got in the room back up 300 feet in 2 seconds and stood the fuck up being offended at your cyborg strengths. This fight would have been a great standoff between man and machine if it weren't for the cover. See, the cover here is not your friend. It is your worst fucking nightmare disguised as a buddy, like a handsome murderer. See, the cover is actually composed entirely of fuel tanks stacked on top of each other, and if Grodd gets the idea in its head to smash them while he's comboing your ass, then the tanks will be smacked away and be set on fire. And that's not the worst part, believe me. Now that the fuel tanks are on fire and scattered around, they can explode. On contact. Yep, if you touch one of these flaming tanks, it will explode automatically. From the first touch. What the hell? Which got exasperating when I got stuck in a corner looking for rations and two seconds later I was surrounded by flaming tanks, Grotta decided to punch me into the floor and my camera decided that this was the best time to look at the adjoining wall when I was getting my face beaten and blown off. Good help is hard to find, but other than that, the score I've given Grodd for this was 7 and 2 thirds Triforces. Story. Again, Grodd is just another blank boss with nothing behind it since Grodd is just being used by Desperado as an obstacle. A painfully hammering obstacle that just needs to delay Ryan because from his run in the sewers, Desperado probably wouldn't have known that all these robots couldn't do it, but whatever, it's just one Grodd. That, for some reason, has been armored a lot better than its later counterparts. So without further ado, it's time to hand out a prestigious three Triforces to the Forklift Marauder. Fun. Fighting Grodd was a strange case for me because of course throughout this entire mission I didn't much care for the robots I'd been fighting because they all turned into generic mooks by the end and could be safely destroyed or snuck around. But once again the combat of this game decides to turn me on my head with ambushes multiple times with enemies that could safely deal a huge chunk of damage out of nowhere while still having the chance to kill you. See, the mooks in this game aren't like the mooks from a COD or such that can be safely dispatched. You have to deal with these ones and somewhat take them seriously before they kill you. Grodd is definitely a generic mook, as we'll see in later episodes, but this guy has been ramped up significantly with the addition of his health bar, assuming that it's new armor to give to the lab's guard because World Marshal used this facility heavily and Desperado doesn't want to disappoint them. But with this new armor combined with the train hitting offense is a fairly challenging boss, tanks notwithstanding, because it forces the player to learn a way around this guy using the extensive combo system that Riot has been given and you have to start learning when to go from offense to defense on the fly, because if you don't, you'll get hit, dazed, and then smashed for huge losses. It's the wake-up call to the player saying that just because something's generic doesn't mean it can't kill you, and that the rest of the game isn't gonna fuck around. I had a good time personally playing this bot because it's the realistic type of challenge. It's not coming from stupid gimmicks, but having to get around a foe, I guess a true duel you could call the Grodd fight, and for that, I'll give it an 8 and one thirds Triforces. Grodd is a generic enemy produced by Desperado in order to serve its employer, World Marshal, by protecting their lab from Ryan, who's investigating it for, um, 
some unknown client because the client is concerned about what it's researching. It was built essentially as a sort of last defense to the lab itself, because after this there are no bigger robots defending the research. So it got upgrades to its offensive and defensive capabilities, creating this incredibly powerful battle robot that looks like a repurposed forklift with a snowblower's plow on it. Cannons, machine guns, rocket launcher, plow arms, and the ability to strafe like the fucking Roadrunner turn it into a towering monster who could hit like a freight train. But I did like the generic fight here because it was a fair duel-like challenge between two enemies with no gimmicks hanging off of it. It's close to that Dark Souls Z challenge, but I'd pick the Fury as being the closer of the two. But this is definitely how you do a boss fight, proving once again that Metal Gear Rising can do generic boss fights and Metal Gear Solid can't. <coughs> Peace Walker. <coughs> the final word for Grodd is that he managed to get a 19 out of 30 for a final score, making it a shame his lack of story killed his score. But what you gonna do? Give you a victory for gamers and hope you come around for the next episode. Thanks for watching. <laughs>